So in this video, we're going to talk about banter and humor. Last week's video was about learning to relax and stay calm under pressure, learning to be present when you talk, learning to work the pauses and take your time so that when you walk up to a woman and say, hey, what's up? You take your time, you relax, you open up, you don't rush. Well, this one is going to be more about banter. It's going to be more about humor. There's going to be a little more energy in it. And I used to work for a company called Pickup 101 back in the day when Pickup 101 was around. I don't know if any of you remember Pickup One or even around when they were, were doing their thing, but their flagship workshop was all about banter. It was all about attraction. It was all about being playfully attractive. And they did a simple process that for years I was kind of against. And as I think about it more and more, that process really did help me out. It was huge for me. I was super in my head. I was super nervous. I was always rushing. I didn't have good energy. And because of that, um, it was really hard for me to start a conversation. But when I started using banter, the conversation started to work. Why? Because the banter was playful, it was fun, it was humorous. You could get the girls going a little bit. And sometimes it failed miserably, sometimes it worked, but it got me into a lot more conversations than if I just walked up and said hi. Later, actually I think now, just today and, and long time later and then now, it's a lot, a lot easier just to say hi. Hey, what's up? And then use a little bit of banter, pepper it in. So I'll say, hey, what's up? And then relax for a bit and take her in. Be there for a moment. So how's your night going? Good. Oh, really interesting. And then I'll flow from there. Maybe I'll pepper it with a little bit, a little bit of banter. You're a dork, aren't you? You're a total dork, you know, and just push some buttons or whatever comes to mind at that moment. You know, uh, it's hard to think of that stuff when you're staring at a camera, but when you're in front of somebody calibrating off of them, it's much easier. What I learned there in the banter was something simple. They had something called a banter deck and the banter deck was just several pieces of paper with, with basically slides on cards that, that you could cut out that had banter lines on it that they had written down, stuff that they found that worked for them. And what I didn't like about it was that a lot of people would take that banter deck, see a line on it, and then try to use it word for word. And that didn't quite work. But when I stopped being loyal to it, because I was a very sensitive person, I could feel everything, and started adjusting it to me, in other words, making it my own. Notice I'm using pauses right now, like last week, but making it my own and I'm calibrating the tension. I started to work for me. And then I started to take the lines and adjust them. I started to say them differently. I said them five, 10 different ways. I started practicing responses. I started bantering with my friends back and forth using the line. How do they want to respond? Can I be spontaneous back without thinking? And the more I did this, the more I took these banter lines and just played with them and stopped trying to say them word for word and practice them in the mirror, in front of a camera, calibrating them in different ways, saying them in different ways with friends, the more the neural pathways in my brain were being built, the more I started to get it, the more powerful I became with these banter lines, the more spontaneous I became. And the better I became at dealing with responses because that was the first problem I had. I would say a banter line and then she would say something back and I, because I was terrible at banter, I didn't know how to respond. So by practicing with my friends, practicing in front of the camera, writing them out, imagining the responses, I got better and better at responses. Now, um, I have the banter deck on my computer. It took me a while to find it, but I found the original Pickup 101 banter deck. And I want to, since the company's not around anymore and I don't think Lance cares, because the last time I saw him, he was giving all this stuff away, I want to give this deck to you. And I want to encourage you to practice it in the mirror, on camera, with friends, in your own way. Make it your own. Play with it, change it, manipulate it. Just get it to the point where you don't think about it anymore stuff comes out of you. Matter of fact, what'll happen when you get really good at this is stuff that's not even on this deck will start coming out of you. You'll start writing your own stuff. In the beginning, you start with the lines and then you build off of those lines. So what's an example of what I'm talking about? Well, <clears throat> I've got the deck right in front of me. Let's play with it. Uh, some of these you can't read, you won't be able to relate to. You'll have to practice them so you can get good at saying them. Some of them you can relate to right away. Uh, some of these I don't even like to say anymore, or I maybe didn't back then and never said them, but they're here for practice. Uh, the first one is you're way too sexy. Get out of here. No, really go. And so when you say it like that, it sounds terrible. I walked up to a girl and, uh, or in a conversation, I threw that out or it, it, it 
probably would land flat if I said it the way I just said it. You know, you're way too sexy. You know, you're way too sexy. Get out of here. No, no, really go. It just, it, it's too fast. It's too flow. So last week I was talking about pausing. I was talking about feeling. And that's what's needed to make these work. How can you make this your own? If I look at it and I said it like four or five different ways, I might say, you know, you're way too sexy. And then I'm saying to the camera, no, you're way too sexy. No, really. No, no, really, really. Go, go. I, I don't want to see you anymore. Go. I don't want to talk to you. You got to make it your own. You got to play with it. And notice I didn't worry about the words anymore. I just took the concept and I played with it. And then you'd say it again. You know what? You're way too damn sexy. You know what? You, you need to get out of here. Go, go. I don't want to see you anymore. You know what? You're way too sexy. Get, get out of here. No, no. I, I don't want to talk to you. Go, go. Um, you know, uh, um, or you might say something. You might change it completely. You might say something like, you know what? You're way too sexy. But you know what? I'm sexier. Go, go, get out of here. Leave. And you'll make it your own. You'll keep playing with it. You'll feel bits of nervousness. Like I'm, I'm actually a bit nervous performing this on camera, um, going through these on camera because I haven't said some of these in years. Some of them I've never said. So they're not my, some of them aren't my comfort zone. Some of them are. Everybody's a little different. Uh, the next one. Let me see you flirt. Let me see you flirt. Now I got to read it first. Let me see you flirt. And see, I'm doing this raw. I haven't practiced these for you guys or nothing. So let me see you flirt. Wow. Now that was really terrible. It actually has made me go. <laughs> I remember this one. Let me see you flirt. Wow. Now that was terrible. It actually made me go gay for a second. This one did hit a lot for the people that like to use it. I didn't use this one much, but you know what? Let me see you flirt. You know, that was pretty damn bad. That was, that was terrible, actually. You know what? I think I went gay for a second. You know, that might hit or miss with today's climate, but you can decide how you want to use it. Um, you can say, you know what? I think I vomited in my mouth. Oh my God, that was bad. You know, and then you make it your own. Okay, let me see you flirt. That's the best you got, really? Come on, you could do better than that. Really? That's it? Ugh, get out of here, go. And you can mix it with the other one. Keep playing till you start to own these. And I'm going to keep saying that over and over. Another fun one. <clears throat> Or another one. I'm not just a slab of beefcake. <laughs> I'm not just a slab of hot young beefcake. So you can say, you know what? Why are you looking at me like that? You know, I'm not just a slab of hot young beefcake. Um, I probably would take out the young part, but maybe I'd leave it. I didn't like it the way it felt. But why are you looking at me like that? You know, I'm not just a slab of beefcake, right? And then you make it your own. Keep playing. Um, you, you know what? I am a slab of beefcake. Take advantage of me. Come on, you can do it. Uh, and say it different ways after each time too. Um, <clears throat> and that one there is a little off for me. So if I said, hey, you know what? I'm not just a slab of hot young beefcake. I am not just a slab of hot young beefcake. I am not just a slab of hot young beefcake. Why are you looking at me like that? You know, I'm not just a slab of beefcake, right? I'm not just a slab of hot young beefcake. The key that's going to make these work is when you begin to enjoy saying them. What I would do is stick to the ones that I enjoyed saying. I would stick to the ones that were fun for me, and then I would build on them. How would I build on them? I would say to a friend, you know, I'm not just a slab of hot young beefcake. Why are you looking at me like that? And he would say something back, well, because blah, 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 or I wasn't looking at you like that. And then I would play off of it. We get a banter, a spontaneous banter role going back and forth without thinking. And then I would do it again. Okay. Another way to do that is you can journal it. You can write stuff out, write responses, then practice them. The key is never to say them word for word. Always go with what you're feeling. Make them your own. Easy there. <laughs> Easy there, hardcore. I'm dainty. Be gentle. Easy there. Easy there, hardcore. I'm dainty. Be gentle. Easy there, hardcore. I'm dainty. Be gentle. See, I have to work these out. I haven't done these in a long time. <laughs> Easy there, hardcore. I'm dainty. Be gentle. Um, Easy there, hardcore. I'm dainty. Don't be too rough. Easy there, trouble. I'm dainty. Don't be too rough. You see, you got to change them. Keep changing them. Okay. You're such a bad girl. Go to my room. 
I like that one. You are such a bad girl. You need to go to my room right now. You are a bad, bad girl. I want you to go to my room right now. Okay, what's another one? Oh, look, the next American Idol. Oh my God, you're amazing. Uh, that'll, that's sure to get the girl to say something like, oh my God, you're such an asshole, or something like that. Um, and so you're off the island. You know, that's a, that's a good one. You're fired. <laughs> Donald, you can go reference to Donald Trump. You're fired, you know, really loud. Uh, you're such a dork is another one. Uh, you are such a dork. Play, think of playground humor, like back in the playground days, kids playing. You know, can I pull your hair? I've said that to a girl before. I said, you know, what? I think I have a crush on you. And then smiled at her. Um, you're such a dork. I've done that. You're such a goofball. I've done that. Um, you're trouble. I've done that a lot. Um, and I change that one depending on who I'm talking to and how I'm talking to them, how well I know them. I always change that stuff. Um, God, I haven't seen this one in years. You would look so damn cute with a mohawk. Um, I think that's awesome. You know what? You look amazing with a bald head. I think it would be awesome. You should do it. Let's do it right now. I have clippers in the drawer. I've done that. I didn't do the mohawk. I've done the bald head thing. You know what? Look, can I shave your head right now? Um, so that's, uh, those are, those are ways I could play with that one. Um, you're all bad girls, aren't you? I can tell. I have to watch out for you. You're all bad girls. And, uh, you know, you're all good girls, aren't you? You're way too sweet and nice. I can tell, you know, uh, so how would you change it? Think about that. What are ways you would say it? So, you know what? You're bad girls, aren't you? You know, you're good girls. I can tell it. You're all such sweet girls. You're all bad girls, aren't you? Uh, you're all good girls, aren't, aren't you? You're all you're, and so I'm thinking there's more I want to add to that one. And if I keep saying it, more is going to come out. And I'm going to start to build the whole thing off of it. Uh, you are all bad girls, aren't you? You know what? I'm going to have to watch out for you. You're all bad girls. I'm going to have to really watch out for you, aren't I? You know what? You're all such good girls, aren't you? Don't pretend to be bad. Don't, don't, don't. I can see that you're just pretending. It's okay. So as you get more comfortable, again, what you're gonna feel is a rise in the body and you're not gonna feel down the core much. And as you start to relax, you're gonna start to be able to make them your own. You're gonna start to be able to build on them. Then you have to, and I'm gonna say this again, I said it earlier, start to work out the responses. So if you have a friend and you say that, you're such bad girls, I'm gonna have to watch out for you. Then have your, how would your friend naturally respond? How do you think they would respond? We're not bad girls or, or we're the worst girls, I could tell. See, my, my, my instincts are right. And then you just kind of go from there. You practice playing off of that stuff. Otherwise, when she says something, you're probably gonna get nervous. So practicing building on it and maybe going for a minute or two with each one can be a very powerful thing. Um, I have said this one, it's been years, but I've said this one. You know what, you look familiar. If we had sex, that one's fucking money. You look so familiar. We had sex last week, didn't we? You look so familiar. If we had sex, and uh, that one can get a good response. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I'm sort of a big deal around here. You know, you're playing arrogant, you're playing cocky. With that one, you gotta make sure they realize you're playing don't come see the, the thing that a lot of guys get that when they miscalibrate these is they come across as too serious too real and so uh and and girls just think they're a dick because they don't realize they're just playing so getting into that feeling light feeling of humor and playfulness when you say it actually gets the message across you're just playing so if i walk up and i say something like i'm not sure if you know this but i'm kind of a big deal around here she's gonna have a harder time understanding that i'm playing but if I come up and say, you know what? I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a big deal around here. And I and I build it up and play with it, that becomes very powerful. So that's another good one. Um, that's it. I'm giving you a ticket right now. And she'll say, what, what for? She'll be confused, especially if you walk up and that's the first thing you say, and you can say this. Um, you can go from there. You can say this stuff in a sentence. I've often used this stuff in the middle of conversation. I use it to spike a conversation that's dying. Let's say you're just talking to the girl for a few minutes. Maybe you walk up and you say hi. You're like, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, my name's Brian. You having a good day? 
And then she says something a little snarky. And then you come out with, okay, I get it. You're a brainiac. I see that. Or, okay, brainiac, what, what's up with the, what's up with the attitude? You know, something like that. Or, oh, Jesus, you're such a dork. You know, that type of stuff starts to uh, become fun and starts to become spontaneous and starts to become uh, playful. And now me personally, I feel like I need to practice these with you on camera. I get nervous putting these out on YouTube. So I find I am coming up and have to relax. I'm less nervous. If I'm just sitting here saying them on myself, I feel like I can calibrate the shit out of them. Tell them to you guys is a good practice for me. So maybe I'll do this a lot more for a while. Just as a way of practicing, I'll get different stuff. Um, and they get more comfortable with you guys. The second, the next one was, okay, Brainiac. <laughs> okay, Brainiac. Okay, you're Brainiac, aren't you? I don't know if I've ever used that one. Um, I'm giving you a ticket. That's it. You, you're getting a ticket right now. Sit down, sit down. Um, sit down. Just stand right there. Put your, put your back behind, your hands behind your back. I'm arresting you. Whatever. Make it up. Have fun with it. Hmm. You know what? Come here. You need to come here. Come here. Let's come right here. I'm going to let you stand next to me for a minute, but only one minute. That's the next one. You know what? You're really bad. You're making me think impure thoughts. You are really a bad girl. You're making me think impure thoughts. Stop that. That's all your fault. Um, you are so bad. Stop making me think impure thoughts. You are so bad. I'm thinking such bad thoughts right now. See that hit home for me just a little bit more. You are so bad. I keep thinking, well, bad thoughts. You are so bad. You're making me think such naughty stuff. So again, calibrate here. Use last week's video, get present, relax between each one, feel, find the vibration, keep playing with it. If you know releasing, release on any stories that are coming up, let them go. You are so, so bad. You know, you make me think impure thoughts. Um, okay. They had in here, you're a Republican, aren't you? You know, you're a Democrat, aren't you? In today's society, I don't know if you want to do that. A lot more polarized today when this came out, but there you go. Um, you're getting me all emotional. I promised my friends I wouldn't go home with anyone. You know what? You're getting me all emotional. I promised my friends I wouldn't go home with anybody tonight. You are getting me all emotional. I promised my friends I wouldn't go home with anybody tonight. You know, you, you're you getting me all emotional. Jesus, I promised my friends I wouldn't go home with anybody tonight. Yeah, that's a good one to look down on. So feel that, how I looked down that time and I felt into my body. That gives me a sense of playing bashful and being nervous. Damn, why'd you do that? You know, you you got me all nervous. I, I promised my friends that I'd be good. I, I wouldn't go home with anybody tonight. Um, and, uh, and then look back and then smile at her and work that pause again, calm, centered, so forth. You know, I don't think my mom would approve of this. You know, my mom definitely wouldn't approve of this. And what you're going to be to find interesting as I go through these is you're not going to have to nail them perfectly in a vibration that's really low energy, like me talking to you on the camera. There's no distractions, no background noises. Yeah, the vibration is more important. As you get into louder and louder environments, the vibration or the quality that, that, that gets you get a little bit more play because all the noise kind of drowns things out a little bit more. But still, you still want that conduit and you still want to be able to feel in your body. Um, but you'll be surprised how well some of this can work and how fast some of it can work. Matter of fact, I've had some deliveries in bars with loud noise and drinks that were pretty bad, damn bad, but the girls responded because they were either attracted to me already, they were interested, they wanted attention, they were just having fun, that type of stuff. So it happens pretty fast. Um, you know what? I got to be honest. Um, I'm kind of, I'm super cute, but I'm not very smart. Uh, that's a very interesting one. I don't think I ever did that one. You know what? I'm super cute, but I'm just not very smart. Sorry. You know, you, you probably should go. And that's that push pull energy, right? You're showing disinterest. You're pushing away. And a lot of nice guys don't get that within a lot of these. There's a lot of push and pull. So I want to encourage you to pay attention to the push and pull of each one of these. Okay and how they feel in your body you know, and start to notice, you know what, you're really cute. Or you know what, I'm really cute, kind of arrogant. There's a little cockiness in that. You can call that a, a push and you know what, um, but I'm not smart. It's kind of a whole, whole thing's kind of a push. 
Um, and so you start to pay attention to these, you'll start to catch the push and pull in each one. You know, you're like my little sister. That's kind of a push because you're saying to her, you're not good enough to be somebody I'd be attracted to. You know, you're like my little sister. Lovable, but you know, pretty damn annoying. There's a total, and then the push gets stronger there. Um, you know, you're like my little sister. You're lovable, but you're kind of annoying. And so that's a that's another good one. So this is just some of them, and I don't want to make this video too long. I think I'm on the. I think there's several more pages of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this as a download in this video, and I want I'm going to encourage you to go find your own get more of your own, start to play with them, start to work with them. And I want to ask you a question. This is a very important question. So, and I definitely want you to answer. Do you want me to do more of these online where I practice playing, I break down the push pull, get a little deeper into them. Uh, so there's several ways I can do it. I can practice these online. I could use the practice because I get nervous doing them online more than I get nervous doing them in person because you know, I'm going to sit there and read all the YouTube videos, what you guys think of, of how I'm doing. So for whatever reason, that makes me nervous. And I like that. That's really good. Stepping in attention. So I can go read the other half of these. I think there's actually probably two thirds more. Um, and you can have them at home. And the second thing is, is maybe I can uh, practice them with people. I can bring somebody in. We can go back and forth. I can practice them with somebody else. And we can just play with them and riff off them. Do bad, do good, do terrible, do great. And just see how it comes out and um, maybe at some point I'll even have you guys send me some and I'll play with them um, but the idea here again as I end this is not to nail these word for word it's to get the energy and the feeling of the push and pull the vibration play with different energies like I'd even encourage you turn on music turn on the TV in the background and do it do it out in a park do these back and forth at a coffee shop with a friend and practice the longer expression because you'll start to notice some major creative energy come out um, if I say, uh, how much, if I, how much of this flirting do I have to take? Oh, how much of this flirting of yours do I have to take? That's a, that's a great line. So let's say I go to a coffee shop with a friend and he pretends to be the girl or I got a girl that I can do this with, which would be even better. That just wants to practice with you. He said, you know what? How much of this flirting of yours do I have to take? And you get that conduit, you get that calm energy, and then she'll say something back. And then we do it. The goal is to set a timer. We're going to go back and forth with this theme for about two minutes and play with it, riff on it, get creative with it. This will strengthen that flirting muscle so much. And if you want me to do more of these, practice them, play with them online, work them out for myself, or you want me to do them with a friend or have somebody come on and start to practice them, let me know and we can make that happen. I think that would be a lot of fun to do. And I like the idea because I can grow in it, but I want to make sure it's something that you want me to do. So definitely let me know if you got a lot of value out of this. I really want to comment in this video um, and uh, there's different ways, different exercises I've got for playing with tension and what I've noticed with fearless and this is a fearless disclaimer is I feel like I need to bring, I brought you guys a lot of vulnerability skills, which makes girls stick to you like glue. It makes you be this man that women want to be with long term. They want to marry. They really care about. You can go deep with sexually. But I feel like we need to bring in a little bit more uh, of the uh, attraction tension skills, not the emotional tension skills. So the skills of spontaneity, dealing with unknown people, meeting new people. So I want to bring a little bit of that in to help spice that part of your game up. I've talked about it a lot in the past, but I haven't been doing it as much lately. Um, so if you want to hear more about that, definitely put a comment in the video. I would love to bring that stuff to you, help you guys understand that this is the stuff that opens the door and what's so important about this. And this is a longer video for those of you that hate my longer videos. Well, too bad. Um, the, the door needs to be open for the rapport. The rapport stuff is great, but that happens with people once they want to get to know you. Let's say you're an average looking dude. You're not ugly, but you're rich. You're not but you don't stand out. This is the stuff that will make you stand out. This is like having tits and ass. Not these lines in particular, but the ability to step into tension with new people and play with them causes them to get curious. And then the rapport causes them to attach to you. And the rapport is about the authentic, real depth and vulnerability, her getting to know you at your soul level. But she doesn't want to do that until she's curious about you. And this gets her curious. This pops open the wall. And this is just one way to do it. You know, you can do it with uh, the push and pull exercise I've done in other videos. You can do it with so many different videos. It's, it's powerful and basically it's fun. 
So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Definitely put those comments in there. I will be looking at it. Uh, make sure to watch my previous video, the one um, that I did on the pauses, because you got to learn those pauses. You got to learn the conduit. You got to learn to relax into your body to really make these work well. Otherwise, it's going to take a lot longer. So make sure to watch that previous video. Get those down. And, uh, and uh, there'll be a link somewhere in here. Uh, make sure to check out uh, the Fearless Experiences. Last year, we're doing the workshops for a while. We're taking a break. So definitely check those out. There'll be uh, a link somewhere online to check out our flagship workshop, the Fearless Experience, where you get to do a lot of these games and a lot of these practices live in person with the models. You get to be filmed. You get to get video feedback. You get to get everything broken down. And this is a life-changing experience for men. Men have been doing this for almost 13, 14 years, and we've improved it so much over the years. It's radical. And all that experience has made one hell of a powerful workshop. And I don't know when we'll be bringing it back. Um, I may have staff members bring it back down the road. I may have my partner Dave bring it back. I don't know yet. But for now, I've uh, been doing this a long time. Need a break. So, um, so definitely, if you want to catch one before they sell out, they will sell out. Definitely uh, click the link somewhere in this video. And uh, with that said, uh, make sure to like, subscribe, make sure to put that comment in there. Don't, uh, and, and the like and the subscribe is important so you don't miss any of these videos, guys. There's a lot of content here. I'm trying to find faster and better ways to help you improve your life. So that like and subscribe will really help out, uh, help you get the content you want and, um, and not miss the future banter stuff that I may do if you guys put the right comments in. And uh, also make sure to, I said like, subscribe, share, and uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you have a beautiful day and remember only the confident really live. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.